in explaining how things are going to flow, uh, one of the things I didn't mention is uh, we would be going, uh, entering in through this door, coming up this way, and we'll have a team of people helping you. And uh, we'll, we'll be handing you some towels, uh, a, a nice big towel to cover you up. So when you go in, you come back up, and we have a little, sort of a little dry room. We're right here. You go right there and dry up real quick, and then you come back out and go that way. So that's how that's going to work. I'm also going to mention that Pastor John uh, will be in the tank with me today. Amen. And uh, so you can also uh, see his skinny legs as well. <laughs> and then I had to throw him in there too. <laughs> that's cold. <huh? laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> But we're a team. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I thank God every single year I've had Brother Kevin working with me this year. Um, uh, Pastor John will be there. And uh, usually it's our desire to have leadership baptized. Uh, so that's a powerful thing for leadership to be baptized uh, as well. So uh, in the future you will see not just pastors but leaders as well baptizing as Jesus did it. That's how Jesus did it. We want to do it. Jesus way. Amen? Amen? All right. Let's get into the Word this morning for just a few moments. Uh, the, best, the title of our message this morning is, is this. Wow! What happened to you? That is the title of our message this morning. In honor of water baptism. Wow! What has happened to you? Our opening verse this morning is found in 2 Corinthians and, and chapter, and chapter uh, 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And we're going to be reading from verse 14 through 17. And again, the, the title itself should come together at, for me, and you'll understand. But once again, Wow, what has happened to you is the title. The Bible says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14 through 17. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, somebody say from now on. Now on. That was pretty good. Something a little louder over here. So. <laughs> say that with me, guys, on this side. Ready? Together. From now on. Ready? One, two, hold on. One, one, two, three. From now on. That's pretty good. How about this side, guys? Ready? One, two, three. One, two, three. That was good. And you're all, what's this about? How about all together, one more time, on the count of three. One, two, three. From now on. Amen. From now on, let us remember this moment, this day, this time, this beautiful celebration, this beautiful honoring of God and, and decisions from His people to re let's remember it as a day, a point, a place in time, a place in your life or where every single one of us, whether you're being baptized or not, that we would say, from now on, I will walk with my King. I will live for my Lord. And even if I've been walking with Him, I make that fresh commitment that I live for Jesus. Not for myself, but I live for my King. Amen. Is anybody amen in that? Amen. I hope so, because that's exactly how it should be. And so going back to the verse, verse 15, and He died for all, and those who live should no longer live for themselves. But for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh. Yet now we know him that way no longer. Verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. 
All things have passed away. And behold, behold, all things have become new. And so from now on, we, we do not look at the Lord as just somebody who is a symbol of religion because he is not. He is the Savior. He is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. He's the Son of God. And so we don't look at him as just a symbol of a religion or something that we, someone we hear about when we go and get together in the church once in a while. From now on, we understand that Jesus died on the cross to pay for all of our sins. And we, from now on, know and accept that he has forgiven us because we've accepted it, we believe in him. And so from now on, we don't live for ourselves. We used to live for ourselves. Everything was always about ourselves. It was always about our comfort and our good time and our fun and our rest and our, you know, our money and our car and our house and our kids and our this and our that and our clothes, right? And, and our legs and our uh, I'm sorry, just joking. No, 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 no. Anyway, it's always, always about us before we met Christ. Then we realized that we were on our way to eternal suffering. Hell's a real place. And our sins were taking us there so quickly. But Jesus reached out in his love for us. In his perfect love for us, he reached out to us and said, I love you and I have given my life for you. You can become my child. And then we have received that blessing. And from that point on, we didn't see him that way anymore. We realized he's our Lord. We don't live for ourselves. Now we live for him. We realize that Jesus doesn't ask us to do things that are ridiculous. He doesn't ask us to do things that are not good for us. He doesn't ask us to do things and to change things so that we can be miserable for the rest of our lives. No. When we meet Christ, we live. We are now alive in Jesus. Before that, we weren't alive. We weren't alive. Thank you for that. But you get what I'm saying. Before we met the Lord, we weren't living. We were existing. And we were existing in pain. We were existing in bad memories, in hurt. We were existing in uh, just uh, the, every day was all about somehow making our life a little bit better. Only to be disappointed every other day. When we met Christ. We realize I'm living now. I am forgiven. My sins are washed away. I'm a child of God now. Now I live with a, a desire to please Him and a desire to love other people. For some of us, we didn't love anybody before we met Jesus. How many of you would agree with me on that? I was one of those. I acted like I love people, but eh, I, was, I was a grumpy grouch. <laughs> I'm looking around, let me see, anybody else had that grumpy grouch syndrome? Just me, okay, a couple of us. <laughs> he taught, he's teaching us how to love others his way. His way. We live for him. We recognize what he's doing, saving the lives of souls, saving people, touching people, changing them, blessing them with a brand new way of living, a brand new purpose. And a purpose that won't let you down. Because it ultimately has us in heaven with Jesus for all eternity. And in that purpose of a powerful life here on this earth. Notice I didn't say a pain-free life. Right? Oh, there are some people, pain, oh, it's not pain-free, I'm out. Let me ask you, before we even get anywhere near what I was about to say. How many of you live a pain-free life now? How many of you live the pain free life before you met Jesus? Truth is, it doesn't exist. This world has its pain and its struggle. But when you meet the Lord Jesus Christ, He is your Savior. He is your Redeemer. He is your Restorer. He is the one that forgives you and gives you a brand new start and a brand new purpose. Now, when you start living for the Lord, there's still this world that we have to deal with. The unhealthiness of our bodies at times. The difficulties of jobs and incomes and, 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 and struggles and responsibilities. But I tell you what you have that you never had before. You had a purpose and a reason. You were forgiven. You have the Lord Jesus Christ carrying you through, seeing you through, walking with you. 
And not lightly, but with purpose. Amen. So the Bible tells us, from that point on, old things pass away. And all things are becoming new. So the question is this, wow, what happened to you? Wow, what happened to you? And I want you to dwell on this with me. I think I'm staying behind this moment. <laughs> the question comes from this. What could make a person change so drastically in a moment of time? What can make a person who loves money and would, would burn his own mother, burn his own mama, in a moment of time, be a person who would be willing to help the poor or be willing to help someone in need? What could make a person change so much that they could be, they could be uh, violent, angry, grouchy, get along with nobody? They become a a person that's, that cries a lot and, and has a tender heart and, and wants to, to just show the love. You know what I'm saying is true. It happens all over the place. I'm looking at a bunch of people here. You were once lost, but now you're found. Amen? You were once something. I was a, a, an idiot, jerk, atheist, drunk, addict, addicted, drinking, problem, perverted, jive turkey. That's what I was. The main thing is, there's a lot of stuff. The main, the main thing is, I was an atheist. I was an enemy of the Lord. What could make a man or a woman change so drastically that they would no longer decide at all, ever, to do those things that they used to do, but they would decide, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to do it differently, and I'm going to do it with all my heart. And so the question is, whoa, what happened to you? And why would anybody ever ask that question? Because they would look at you and see that you've been changed. You used to be that guy or that girl. You were that neighbor down the street that the kids would say, Ugh, oh, that's old, crazy, mean person. Don't go in their yard. You better hope the ball doesn't land in their backyard because you'll never see it again. No, you weren't. Anybody have that? When you were growing up, you were playing ball with your friends, ball went in that person's, in that person's charge, you are like, that ball's gone. Because that crazy, yeah, that neighbor right there, uh -huh. Maybe you were that neighbor. You're sitting there going, I didn't have a neighbor like that. Well, maybe it's because you were the neighbor. <laughs> you were the one everybody else was like, yeah, that's the one. And again, the question is, well, what happened to you? What could have possibly happened to you to change you so drastically? I can think of two men in the Bible right now, and I'm just going to bring them out quickly, and then we're going to move on. One is a man by the name of Zacchaeus, found in Luke chapter, I believe it's Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19, verse 8 through 10. Amen. Woo! All right. Amen. That's a pretty big hallelujah there. Um, Luke 19, 8 through 10. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read that real quick. Uh, how many of you following so far? Amen. Okay, amen. Now check this out. Luke 19, uh, 8 through 10 says this. This is a guy by the name of Zacchaeus. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. Jesus said to him, today, salvation has come to this house because he is also the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. He's the first person I want to think about. Here's Zacchaeus, tax collector, hated by everybody, and he didn't care. Any of those? I don't care. Any of those former? You might say, I'm still like that. <laughs> If you're still like that, salvation needs to come to your house. <laughs> right? Yeah. But seriously, that's what I would say. I don't care what they think. I don't care what they say. I don't care. Let them, let them give me that dirty look. Whatever. <laughs> you ever do that? Whatever. Oh, no. well, yeah, that was whatever, right? 
that's what happens. And so here's the key is, I don't care. He would burn people. He was burning people because he was a tax collector and he was collecting more than he should. And it didn't matter if a sweet little old lady came to the door. Here's my taxes. Uh-huh. That was last week. Give it a little bit more. No, no, I don't have any more. Too bad. This guy was ruthless. He loved his money. He loved his, uh, his possessions. And he didn't care if nobody liked him. And then salvation came to his house. And the guy who was willing to rob from his mother, brother, cousin, and whoever else, his very next door neighbor, the salvation comes to his house. And what does he say? Oh, Lord. If I burn anybody, I'll give them back four times as much as I burned them. You know, everybody in that household that lived there went, what? Am I right about this? Wouldn't you be? Come on. I'm sorry, did y'all fall asleep in that oh, moment? Come on, come on, come on. If there was, I mean, here's this person, this family member in your life who's just crazy, radical, you know, you're just, whoa, this person's so crazy. And in one moment of time, they just, Something happens, and they make a decision to change. I'm not doing that anymore. Zacchaeus' family is probably like. Anybody remember uh, Fred Sanford? <laughs> I'm coming. Heart attack. I'm coming. Somebody. Zacchaeus gave somebody a heart attack. Why? Because he went. He changed drastically. He didn't want to be that person he used to be. And it happened in a moment. All of a sudden, he's like, Jesus is sitting in my house. He loves me. And I can see now that I've done wrong. I don't want to be that anymore. I want to love my Lord. And so I'm ready to change. I'm ready to stop living for myself. And if that means sacrifice, then i got to sacrifice to make it right. If it means I gotta pay a price, I gotta pay a price, but I'm not living for myself anymore because I'm thankful for what Jesus did for me. My life has changed forever because of what Jesus did for me. My life is now on a different path. I'll tell you right now, the family members are going, whoa, what happened to him? Come on. Is there anybody in your life that's saying that about you? What happened to you? There's another guy that comes to mind. His name is Peter, one of the apostles. And though Peter is an apostle, and God used him tremendously, if you ever think about his life, and, and there's too many verses to jump around at this morning, so we're just not going to go. You have to trust me that it's in the scriptures, okay? Peter was that guy walking with Jesus early. He was sort of picked out as a leader amongst the twelve. Jesus treated him not with favoritism, but with love, and, and worked with Peter. And so Peter, you know, he got a little bit too much into himself. And he was already walking with Jesus, and he got a little bit too much into himself. And when that time came, when Jesus was going to die on the cross, and he began to tell his disciples this, Peter steps up and says to them, Hey, you know what, Jesus? If everybody else leaves you, if everybody else runs in fear, if everybody else chickens out, not me. I got your back. Now that's paraphrasing. That's modern day Tony way of saying it. Okay? That's what Peter said. Not me. Though everyone, everyone in this room, and he was talking about his brothers, his the, the disciples, and even the ladies there. If all of them decide that they're not going to back you, they're going to be afraid and run when 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 you die on the cross. Not me. Not me. I got your back. I'll be there to the end. You know what happened? Just in case you didn't know what happened. The Bible says during the time when they took Jesus and began to beat him, he denied Jesus three times publicly. And on the third time he denied Jesus, what does that mean exactly to deny Jesus? People said, hey, aren't you a follower of Jesus? Weren't you with him? Hey, everybody, check him out. He's over here. Jesus is over there. Don't you think he should be over there with him? Peter says, I didn't know. I didn't know. Someone else said, ah, you know what? I don't know. No, nah, I've seen you. I've seen you. Huh. I've seen you with him. You knew him. I'm telling you, I didn't know him. And then finally, some little girl walks up. Ah, 
Your accent, you're a Galilean, just a, your accent gives you away. I know you were with him. And so Jesus, to make it very clear that he didn't know Jesus, he starts cussing. Bleep, 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 bleep. Now you know I'm not going to say a cuss word, right? Come on. For emphasis. <laughs> bleep, 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 bleep. I didn't know him, all right? That was the attitude. Do whatever he could to make sure that they didn't connect him with Jesus. Here's that same guy, Jesus, I got your back. You know, you know, you know though everybody runs, not me. You follow me? Yeah. Oh, but there came a time. There came a time, folks, and it wasn't long after that, when Jesus had died on the cross, and then he rose from the dead and proved he beat death out of the grave. He proved that Jesus is the Son of God, and there he was. He restores Peter. He loves Peter. He, he, he forgives Peter of all. He said, aren't you thankful that God forgives us? Yeah. Even when we deny him. And notice I said when we deny him, because we do sometimes, whether we admit it or not. He loves us and forgives us, and he works on us. And so he forgives Peter. And there comes a place in time in Peter's life where he stands up to the very people that put Jesus on the cross, and he tells them, you are the ones who put him on the cross. And he knew that that would mean he's next, but he was no longer afraid to risk his life and risk it all. And in a moment of time, in about a week's time, he went from this scared, uh, big mouth, boasting, you know, this guy who, who it's, it's all about image, it's all about what you think I am. And he went from that guy, but a phony and a hypocrite, to a guy who said, you know what, if I got a guy on the cross for my Lord, I will. And how many know he did? He gave his life. And he was not afraid to stand up for the Lord and to pay any price there was to pay. All in a moment of time. I promise you this. Everyone around him was going, whoa, what happened to you? Zacchaeus, you're willing to give four times as much as you took from people? What happened to you? And maybe today you're needing to realize this. Water baptism. We can say that very thing about those who've been baptized in Christ. It's not the baptism that washes away the sins. It's not the baptism that cleanses it all away. No, no, no. Long before the baptism, and maybe not that long, but time before the baptism, there was a belief. There was faith in Jesus. I'm a sinner. I know I need Jesus. I know I need to be forgiven. I believe in you, Lord. I accept you. I want you in my life. And from this, from now on, I will serve you. And then the point came up where the, where the commandment of God Came. Will you be baptized? And those who are being baptized today, they said, I will. Amen. I'm not ashamed. I'm not afraid. It's not about me. It'll never be about me. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it feels like. I don't care what anybody thinks. What I care about is that once I was lost, once I was all into myself, and now it's all about Jesus. Once I was this guy, and now I'm this guy. Once I was this lady, and now I'm this lady. I'm that person that you only moved if it was convenient. You only came out if it was uh, uh, easy for you. You only took a chance if it was a very limited risk. You only, you only went so far. Now you're willing to tell the world I'm a child of God and I'm not ashamed of it. I'm actually very proud of it. And I made a declaration that I am, I am united with the Lord. When he died, I died with him. And when he rose from the dead, I rose to a newness of life. And I make a decision right now. From now on, my co-workers, neighbors, friends, the people at Walmart. <laughs> in some fashion or another, are going to go, whoa, what happened to you? 